Mabuhai Kamustika, welcome. How are you? This is Bob from Love Beyond the Sea. Here are 13 things my Philippine and I neglected to discuss before marriage. Now, I even have a video series of um, questions to ask a Filipina at different stages to get to know each other. You can find the whole list, in fact, at lvbts.com. It is safe to say that since my wife and I got married so quickly, a lot of questions were not asked. I felt like I knew what I needed to know about her. She felt like she knew what she needed to know about me. So we decided just to trust each other. We've been married since May of 2015, and I think we both made the right decision. We wanted to continue to get to know each other after marriage, which is that way for everyone. Having been married, there are some things I wish we could have talked about before we did. Please subscribe to Love Beyond the Sea, where my goal is to help foreigners and Filipinas to learn how to work together to have a fulfilling marriage. You might have to remember to uh, click on that notification bell. Also, I want to start having some live podcasts, and for you to chat or call in on your mobile device, I would need for you to subscribe and follow Casting Beyond the Sea, Casting Beyond the Sea on Podbean. You can always listen on your desktop. We know relationships are hard work. I'd like you to be able to learn from my mistakes and the things I do right. Please leave a comment about something you wish you had talked about before you married a Filipina, but somehow it just slipped your mind or you didn't think it was really important at the time. I will start with our past. This is one that I not thought much about, but my wife did mention. We did talk about what my wife volunteered to say, not because I asked her about it directly. I did talk a little bit about my past relationships, but there was really only one of those. And I did go into detail, but we didn't talk a lot about our childhood, didn't talk a lot about our work experience. I think my focus back then was on the present, what kind of woman she was, and if she was what I was looking for. The only time I found out something she wanted to share with me was on her own initiative, you know, something personal probably because I, I opened up first. It was never my intention to talk to her about um, her past so much. I don't know why, it just never really occurred to me. And we did move very quickly. As our marriage has continued, we have both opened up more, and I'm glad that she has done that. There isn't anything she could tell me that would make me feel like I shouldn't have married her anyway. She has a right to keep some things to herself and reveal them at the appropriate time when she feels comfortable. She did tell me that we'll just focus on the future, start new with our lives, which I thought was good advice. Night Owl. I have always liked the early morning, the cool, the darkness, the feeling that everything is about to wake up and that I was a little bit ahead of it. By 9 o'clock at night, I felt like there wasn't anything left to accomplish or the energy to do it. My wife, however, showed signs of um, not liking to go to bed so early or getting up so early. She tried to be on my schedule, but as time went by, she opened up that she had a difficult time waking up then. I, I just assumed she would be okay with going to bed at night the same time. I don't know why, but you know, we just didn't think about it. My wife tried in the early days, but by the time she got a job at the same place I worked, she was more open about how difficult it was for her to get up early for work. It may have been easy for me, but it was just as difficult for her. She tells me she is more suited to going to work later in the day. I tell her I think it's normal for people to get up early. Um, you know, when the sun comes up, go to bed after it goes down. However, some people I realize are just wired differently. When a night owl is married to an early bird, that's going to bring up this issue of when we go to bed. My assumption was we would always go to bed at about the same time, and that isn't always going to happen when we are mismatched this way. I'm disappointed when we aren't in bed at the same time, but again, I realize as hard as it is, my wife isn't tired or ready when I am. This is where concessions need to be made to accommodate each other. Even if we had talked about this before marriage, it wasn't going to be a deal breaker, but at least I would have been better prepared for the next thing that we didn't talk about, and that is job shift. When I told my wife before she immigrated that I would try to get her a job in the company where I was, I assumed it would be a first shift job like I have always had. 
for a little while, for about a year, I worked at a radio station in Sturgis, South Dakota, and I had no choice but to start working about 5.30, 6 o'clock in the evening, leaving around 1 or 2 in the morning. It wouldn't have been my first choice. It was unnatural and a town of, what, 5,200, very difficult to socialize. When her job changed to a second shift, night shift position that started at 6 p.m. and went until 6.30 in the morning, 12-hour shift, seven days out of 14, that made me feel sick. And it has changed again since that time. You know, I'm thinking about having to sleep alone for several days a week, several days a week and, and how I wouldn't like it. I pleaded my case the best I could, but I had to realize that she feels more energized when she works at night. That could be worse. I could, I could tell she didn't like getting up early in the morning. She gets ready for work in like 15 minutes. That includes a shower. Me, on the other hand, I get up about an hour and a half before work. And when I was single, I got up about two and a half hours before work so I could do all my cooking for the, for the day, get on the internet and relax before going to work. We're not matched up when it comes to this kind of preference, but we do have to deal with it. I don't want my wife to work on a shift that she hates. She is helping with a couple of big bills, pays for her own car, paying for a lion's share of the Philippine South, sending money back home. She's been a great wife to me, so I figured there was no reason to stand in the way if she could get this job on night shift. What is good for my wife is good for me and good for us. She is willing to compromise as she is sympathetic to my need to spend as much time together as we can. So we have talked about what her sleep schedule would be like and you know how it would be challenging. I have my doubts about not having a regular regimented sleep schedule like I've always had, but we just have to try it and see. This is something that has been good for our marriage because it revealed that we needed to make a change in something that is best for one, but not the first choice of the other. I acquiesced because I want what's best for her. And she has offered to try to make the necessary concessions to make it easier on me. Of that, I am proud of her. Now, the big topic of money. There are a lot of ways money could be talked about, but I'm not sure there's much ground you can cover before marrying your Filipina. Are you going to discuss exactly how much to save for retirement, how, retirement, how much to spend on things, how much you need to retire, how much to spend on entertainment, how much you're going to save? It could be many things. We didn't talk about what my wife would spend her earnings on if she got a job here. I don't know about anyone else, but she didn't ask me about money issues when we were um, still single, and I didn't bring it up either. Maybe some do, and that's okay. It just wasn't something that we focused on in those days. Now, of course, it's a, a more prominent topic. How about driving, driving a car? Here's another topic of discussion that seems like a natural, yet we didn't talk about it a whole lot. Now, eventually, I did pay for some lessons um, after we were married, before she arrived, she drives very well and can get around the city just fine, especially with GPS, although she really doesn't need to rely on it even as much as I do. I would not tell her that she must learn to drive um, because uh, if she doesn't drive in the Philippines, most don't, and he, she hasn't been serious with a foreigner before, she's probably not even given it any thought you know, driving. So I would maybe let her bring up that topic. There are always going to be things that come up that you couldn't have known at first, like, for example, the possibility of retiring in the Philippines, maybe building a house there, the type of employment she will have in your country, and other things. Situations come up like a job change or a health issue you can't predict. The best you can do is believe you have a good grasp of the kind of character she has and a good handle of her commitment to you. None of the things I mentioned are deal breakers or cause me to second guess, but perhaps this will help you realize that after doing the best you can, there will probably be some things you would have preferred to know, but it didn't occur to you. Let's continue with eating habits. We got married very quickly, and I don't know how important this would have been to talk about, but neither of us talked about eating habits. I wanted to marry someone who had decent eating habits. 
and um, you know, I had proposed to her already, committed to her before even meeting her. So I think it was just I didn't know. Thankfully, she is okay in this area. White rice, I don't think is the best, but you are not likely to change that with a Filipina. Retirement goals. With my wife being much younger than I am, retirement isn't on her mind. But it would have made sense for me to talk about retirement goals that I had. I was so focused on her and the visa process we had coming up that I just never got around to any retirement talk. And that is something that we have talked about since we've been married. Here's a biggie having children or adoption. You'd think we would talk about this at least a little bit, but we didn't. I didn't have children and the possibility of having one wasn't a deal breaker when I looked for a wife. It just wasn't something that was on my mind. How about whether you will live in a house or an apartment? I had lived in apartments my whole life, you know, when we got married. And I kind of assumed we would stay there as long as we needed to, but eventually we bought a house. How about where to go on vacation? This is something you talk about when sharing your favorite travel places or places you'd like to see someday. I had been perfectly content where I was and didn't give any thought to vacation destinations. My wife, however, is interested in sightseeing and I've really enjoyed the places that we've seen together, but that is something that could have caused some conflict. How about the division of labor? I don't know if other people talk about who's going to do what once they are together, but I know we didn't. My wife likes to have the responsibility of cooking, cleaning, and shopping, and she even likes to do the yard work. So for us, this area has not been a source of conflict. Speaking about conflict, how do you deal with it? Talking about how each of us handles conflict is a good idea before getting married. The more time you spend together should reveal some differences or similarities in how you handle conflict. In fact, it's on my list of questions to ask each other, but it wasn't something we actually did before getting married. Again, please subscribe to Casting Beyond the Sea in Podbean and follow so you can know when a live podcast begins. On your mobile device, you can chat or call in, and I hope to be starting that soon. There might have been more than 13 things we neglected to discuss before we got married, but that's not really a problem if you are committed to your love beyond the sea.